first of all, you could sleep here without being harassed about it. That's a, that's a big thing. If you're poor and you're on the street, being able to sleep without being harassed, that's a big deal. And, uh, and then you look around and people are doing stuff. Stuff they couldn't do anywhere else. Like, you look at the rain. I couldn't have done that in any town, any town. Nowhere would they let some guy who's broke ass, got nothing, start gathering junk couches together and, and use lumber and building a stage. And you couldn't do that anywhere but here. Well, how long have you been here? Well, since, since like 13 years ago? I think it was. Is it like 13 years ago? I don't know what math is. Like Maybe okay, 16 two. or 17. Your backyard, the range. How, how did you create it and what inspired it? I mean, I'm pretty okay. sure I know what inspired it, but I want to hear it. Here's the story. And uh, while I'm air drying, I look up to the stars and I say to the, to the stars, I say, well, you've decided I have to live here. But how the hell is a guy going to meet a girl in a desolate ass town like this? And she looks down upon me and says, what are you going to do about it? to pick up chicks, is that what you're telling me? Well, it, <laughs> of course that reflects a broader problem where Slab City had no social life whatsoever. Oh, okay. And and so, what could you do about that, right? Pardon? So when you realize your town has absolutely no social life, you think, what could you do? Leonard Knight wanted to spread the word of God's love. He had an epiphany in his life and knew he had to change things. And so I kind of built my place after his design. I mean, just hay bales covered in mud. So you've got tons of grass. You can build your house with it. Stack your hay, cover it with mud. You've got an excellent place. We have people coming here from Germany, Italy, Netherlands, a lot of people from China and Japan come here. And it's their dream to come to Salvation Mountain. This is their destination, it's quite amazing. We're all wondering where all that money's going off Salvation Mountain. It's one of the things we think about. Don't know if it keeps us up at night, but. There's some weird energy here. Watch what you wish for, watch what you think. It may just happen. And I've seen it enough to know it's true. I don't know want to say there's a wormhole or anything weird like that here, but there's definitely an energy of Slab City. 
if you think it into existence, it could happen out here. When you're out here at night, it's better than the day. And if you stay up all night long, you see shit. You sit there and you you, you be awake when they want you to be asleep. And when I say they, then we're talking about the people of the world who don't want you awake. And, you know, they don't want you to know what's going on. The world continues to revolve when you're sleeping. And I don't like to sleep. And I try not to sleep a lot. I've been out here 20 years. And I've actually raised three kids. I was a single parent, and it's hard, but they have a school bus that comes out here and picks up the kids right there at the school bus stop. And it, as long as you keep them clean, you got running water, and some way to keep the kids cool, they don't bother you. But the CPS will come out and check. And if, uh, you have, if you're not up to par with them, they're gonna take your kids. They're definitely gonna jerk the kids from you. And like my neighbors, they got, uh, they got those taken away and they're still working on it for two years now. And whether they're gonna give them back or not, I have no idea. They call us homeless. There's people that have lived here 20 years. There's a kid that's been born here and he's 13. We're not homeless. We have homes, but we're just squatting. We don't own our land, but that doesn't mean we're homeless. We may be houseless, I have three trailers and a tree house. You know, we have running water, we have it delivered. Yeah, I have an outhouse with a drop toilet. Doesn't flush, what do I care? You know, it's off grid living at its best. We even have a pharmacy that delivers here twice a week. We don't even have to go to Brawley to get our pills. So that's really cool. We're spoiled humbums, humbums of the desert. Back in the 70s and 80s, this whole area right here, this road, used to be nothing but uh, swap meters. And the uh, Chamber of Commerce went and changed that. And they made them all stop. They were kind of jealous because out here they didn't have to pay, but in there they do in town. It was Old Marine Base. We still have the Chocolate Mountains. It's a large training facility. We hear rat a tat tat all night long sometimes. The Army guys are over there in force right now. I'm not sure what they're up to, but they've got three bases lit up. You can see it at night. But back to the Slab City. That is called that because of the slabs that was the old marine base. What they swam in as a pool is now our skateboard park. Come in for a moment. Come up here, please. I, my eardrums are blown out. I see, but you come in. Come on. Any choice, Buff? I'll touch you. Huh? Try some. Look. Try right here in the ridge. Look at your job. That tape. Yeah, six months apart. Nux. It's a Ford. He was a Ford to get Christian. He got me this. So I don't die. Hey, take all these yeah. I don't pay no shit, okay? You be careful, watch where you're stepping, don't get hurt. So oh, I, I chopped his head off and I threw him up there and buried his head up there. Snake Man Gary, I call him Uncle Gary. Um, 
What's wrong with him? You know, he's a really cool guy. I trust him with my life. He's a little bit wacko, but he's a really nice guy. I am the Pope. I'll drop that fucking hammer on you now. I think around here what we have is a lot of mental illness, drug addiction, and it's not about being a brave or honorable or anything or who could beat who in a fist fight. It's, they're a bunch of cowards that are out late at night tweaking and sneaking up on you and getting their revenge in the dark. It's pretty much what they do around here. Pretty low life. It's a pretty low life area. And uh, yeah, I'll stand behind that. That's why I think I'm about ready to get out of here. I want to evolve beyond Slab City. We were having a conversation, you know, about traveling and things like that. Um, and him sleeping with, you know, younger girls about my age, 20, you know. Um, I told him I didn't agree with it, and he asked me why. And I said, what if it was my daughter one day? And he said, fuck your daughter. So I got a little pissed off at this, and I said, you know what, fuck you. I'm going to steal your fucking weed. And I walked outside of his little camp thing, um, ended up grabbing my backpack up, my, all my other things, and he came out and whacked me good in the head, you know, kept beating the shit out of me. I went to the ground. I kept trying to grab him and throw him, you know get him off me, um, and he put a rope around my neck. At this point, he started stripping butt fucking naked. Um, so, I didn't know what to do. I started yelling as loud as I could. Um, he kept kicking me and punching me in the head and stuff um, when I was down on the ground. He ended up tying me to a tree after a while, um, and he still continued to kick me in the stomach and the chest and the face and the head, so, yeah, that's about it, you know? It's pretty crazy, and ended up, the ambulance got called and I had to go in and have an MRI stuff done on my head, make sure I didn't have a concussion, and uh, turns out I was right. I got a pretty gnarly scar from it. Uh, <laughs> adds to my handsome features. You know, we get a lot of kids here on meth, strung out on meth for days on time. They lose their mind. They lose their ability to reason why and what the real truth is, and they get all foggy. They might attack you with a knife, and then uh, God knows, man, your life is on the line, right? And that happened to me here not long ago which finally I did overcome the guy, just luckily I had enough strength left in me to do it. I was running out of strength. I was thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna pass out and he's gonna kill me. But I finally overwhelmed him and tied him up. It was horrible, it was a very ugly event, except I did get this thrill out of thinking I'm 66 years old and I kicked this fucking guy's ass, he's 22. He's like Marine Corps fucking fit and I kicked his ass. I tied him to a tree, every which way I could figure out how to tie him up and beat the hell out of him, finally. <laughs> <laughs> the rope burns that I got from the rope when he had me tied from my arm here, um, my wrists, my neck. Well, I felt really uncomfortable when he got naked. Um, I've heard stories that he has raped uh, about two different women. Um, I've heard he's not a very good man. <laughs> but what you say to the most beautiful women in the existence of time and space if you meet her? Um, you be like, your beauty is encrypted like the inscriptions of Egyptian hieroglyphs inscribed inside ancient pyramids and well I've deciphered it. For you to exist breaks every law of physics because I've never seen a woman so flawless or exquisite. I'm gonna break her down like this. I'm gonna start at her luscious lips. Her kiss will be softer than tenderness and sweeter than bliss. Then I'm gonna walk it down to her little bit thick hips and the way she switched from side to side with each stride she got me seasick as I watched that ass bounce with class. She moves with grace and elegance making everything else irrelevant as she walked past. And if I happen to see her in public, I'm gonna love it. Run up and give her a hug and kiss and think nothing of it. Then I'm gonna look into her eyes. They so deep and mysterious. Looking into them got me weak and delirious and I'm furious cause I don't know why. Curious knowing I bet she's shy and she won't say nothing. But if she were to say something, one thing's for sure, her words would be like the song. Birds sing, no lie, she got your boy so high as to think of how she is so fly. Women are disappearing out here and people don't do nothing about it. We had a group of people up on the mountain not too long ago that caused a whole lot of trouble. I had a claw hammer, the claw end of a hammer stuck in my skull. And I was on life support for seven months at Fort Bliss. Some of them I heard did go to jail. So that was good. There were people out here, uh, Vance, uh, David Fowler. Um, he's got acid splotches on his face and big ears that are discolored. And they were, um, 
doing drugs and I'm not into meth. And they had something called GHB or catamine, something like that. Later on, someone said it was catamine that was in my blood and it knocked me out, but they kept on beating the fuck out of me. They filmed it and um, I did a rape kit and my rape kit never even went nowhere. There were about probably five involved while I, w I came in and out of consciousness. It seems like the women out here, when they get something done to them, the rape kits don't go through. They don't go through. It's like the police automatically get hold of whatever evidence and destroys it automatically. And the police don't do nothing. They're too busy with whatever they're busy driving around doing. But I know it ain't got nothing to do with the drug activities. I didn't know that a lot of people died. A lot of people are dying out here. I see some changes are good, um, but a lot of things are still wrong. You know, we don't have anything being done with Leonard's Mountain up there. I see money going every place but to the mountain. People are still living off of a dead man's money. And they're not Christians. Lynn Bright, Builder Bill, Salvation Mountain Inc. They're made up of drug addicts and alcoholics. I don't like that. And the funniest thing is that part of it hasn't changed. And they don't like me out there because of my HIV. Be drugged, wake up out there on a bombing range or out in the middle of the desert. Being the man that runs the Christian Center, what she told me, man, it touched my heart, man. It just, I wanted to go out there and look for these people, you know, but when five, six guys drug a woman, rape her, rip the hair out of the back of her head with patches, and she told me her asshole hurt for a month and a half, that just, that made me so sick that I wanted to go in there and uh, get something and go take care of some business. And that's just, that's just wrong, period. I don't care where you're at, who you are. If, if, if you think that's okay to happen, then uh, you, know, something, you better check yourself, something wrong. You'll find good things in the desert. And you'll find some bad things too, if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> It's 125, 124, 123 in the shade, and no breeze blowing, you're gonna understand what hot is. Because we absolutely have no power, no electricity, no water. We have nothing here. This is out in the middle of the desert. It will kill you. It will kill you. Yes, I had to use mace about seven times. <laughs>
I'm Crystal and I've been living in Slab City for about a year. It's the coolest place on earth. We have a cold shower box, which is so vital for this place. Uh, we get to cool down and clean ourselves. And uh, we have the range every Saturday. Anybody who has talent can go and share their talent. So I also have a little business I'm starting, Camel Your Auto. I build all my solar panels and the brackets and the antenna for my TV, which I also have security cameras. I calculated all the wattage to make sure I'm using more panel uh, than the batteries is just a backup. And I have installed security cameras because I do security, so this gives me a little um, advantage. I do the tennis tournament and the Coachella Festival, all the bit nationwide events is what I do security for. I, I'll do anything. And I have different looks and all kinds. People wouldn't even recognize me. So I could do any type of security. And I also have a TV in there and a bed. So when I um, have off time in between shifts, I can rest as well. Slab City is where everybody is free. We don't have to pay taxes, mostly is the people that make it a great place. I would say MJ. MJ is a girl, she is very talented, very genuine, very down to earth. So everyone should at least experience that once in their lifetime coming down to Slab City. Definitely hierarchy within anarchy. I mean, animals don't have governments, but they do have hierarchies. And a lot of people kind of have this misconception about anarchy being anti-government, but I believe that government is a product of anarchy. You know, chaos comes from order, comes from chaos, comes from order. It's just the cycle, the natural cycle of human progress. Anarchy isn't like no rules. It's everyone makes up their own rules for their space and their sphere. The consequences of your action are your own completely, and you own them. And it's very evident out here, um, like in the way where if somebody fucks around with somebody else, their house might get lit on fire. Bombay Beach is like a super poor area, um, right next to the Salton Sea. It's kind of like Slab City, except that you have to pay to stay there. It looks like it was bombed. <laughs> the place looked like it was, uh, it went through a war or something. Oh, I could talk shit on Burning Man for fucking, like, ever. I hate that shit. I hate that whole, like, mentality, that consumerist mentality. Like, Burning Man is so expensive, and all of these people go, and so it's classist, inherently. Only people with a bunch of money can go, and then they burn everything afterwards so nobody else can look at the art. It's like they're trying to keep it for themselves. And also, that's just, like, bad for the environment. It's irresponsible. It, it wastes resources. If you're gonna spend that much time building shit, like making art, why why don't you make it something that lasts? Like have a big ass rave party and build like houses for people instead of like big fucking sculptures that you're gonna burn afterward that only rich people are gonna see. 
one of the things that a lot of tourists will ask me when they come out here or like when I tell them about Slab City. They'll, th yeah, they'll be like, is it, it sounds just like Burning Man. And I'll be like, no, it's what Burning Man is trying to be. We're actually living it. They're a bunch of rich weekenders burning shit that's useful. Yeah, East yeah. Jesus is a burner crew. Yeah. I've never been invited over to East Jesus. I've gone and asked for a tour a couple times and was pretty much blown off. He's a real character. Pinky, I, I came out the other day and he was giving his pecker a massage. Yeah, they can do that. He had to have his head down there and he was sucking on his penis. I I don't know what why I didn't ask him. I, I guess maybe he had a fly or something on there. <laughs> I just stood there and my mouth dropped open and I was just aghast. I've never seen a horse or a mule do that before or a burrow, but, but Pinky, you know, he's a, maybe he's a genius or something. <laughs> I had my mouth full um, one time at the hot springs and was talking to somebody. <laughs> I was in the front seat of my car giving my guy a head and <laughs> talking to some other guy that we was that he knew. <laughs> so we was I was talking with my mouth full. <laughs> my name is Thomas and I've been here for about almost two years now. I'm from Chicago and I got here because I was actually heading to San Francisco for 420 and we had to drop off a friend of mine who got pregnant in India and about five minutes from where we were dropping my friend off we got into a car accident which led to me meeting these people on a green bus, went to the Joshua Tree and then after that they came to the slabs and they left and I stayed. <laughs> There, there was this one time where there wasn't many travelers left, but there happened to be this, this couple that came by, and they were, they were a little weird. They came with a handle, uh, a case of beer, and they're like, yeah, everyone, let's just get naked. Let's get comfortable with ourselves and just hang out. And there, it was more like some weird foot jobs with some people. Toes up the butt, that was another funny one. She and he were like sticking their toes up uh, one of the guy's butts and another one. Just a lot of algae, but way too much like. It just kind of just looks like someone's shit in there. God created three genders, the burning bush, the garden, and the slabs. Offer massages to clients, to men, multiple men, to uh, make money. Uh, people give out blowjobs, but that's only nature. That's only natural. Or well, at least I know a few women that like giving out blowjobs. I look forward to the one I gave out today.
he got a boner and I got it off for him. That's what happened. <laughs> seen the temperature out here go clear up to about 128. Uh, coolness is something you've got to do. You gotta, that's why they are real strict about the water situation. It's something you've got to have out here. Without that, you're not going to make it. A week ago, it got up to 123 degrees. If you can't handle it, don't come out because it's, it's rough. I feel like we've lost quite a few people this year. Because there's snakes, you've got all kinds of different things that you've got to watch out for. Coyotes, they've gotten pretty bad here too now. We've got coyotes that'll come right up and they uh, one night went and busted, run right up and uh, jumped through a woman's trailer window, busted it just to get to their little chihuahua. And we've got the military out here now training and at night you'll hear a lot of bombing, a lot of gunfire, and it almost sounds like a war zone sometimes. And you've got helicopters, planes going by all the time. All the military activity in the sky. You never really know what you're going to see. Sometimes it could be shooting stars or missiles or some nice mushroom clouds. It really depends, but a lot of, a lot of the stuff in the sky is kind of mind-blowing. Yeah, you, you'll see shit out here at night, the ones that can fly in stealth mode and darkness and not even make a sound. I've seen them, and I could watch them, and they're pretty cool. And then they play with their helicopters, and they got helicopters to fly through and break sound barrier, and you won't hear that chopper coming until it's on top of you. I see them train out here, they drop bombs, they shoot tracers, and it's pretty freaking awesome. You know, they shoot the bombs, it'll shake the ground in the, in the trailer you're living in right here. It's pretty much like you'll feel the thrumble and the rumble of it. Uh, an atomic bomb or something like that, but it went off, and we had no sound to it, but it had the mushroom cloud. It had a lot of us worried. There was a couple camps, actually. In one day, two, two trailers got burnt down. I've seen so many changes that it's unbelievable. I mean, it's not all being good. Oh, this guy owes me $10. All right, I'm going to go burn this guy's trailer down. In 2003, I had a 70-foot mobile home. It burnt down. It was one of the biggest fires they've had out here. They had fire departments clear from uh, here to uh, Calexico. They said that it looked like a big forest fire, but that was 17 years of my life I lost in that fire. The circus camp got burnt down, which is right next to the skate park. There was one guy out here for a while that, that you could pay him a couple of bucks and he'd burn you out. The circus camp, when it got burnt up, I was actually sleeping inside of it. Um, I got woken up maybe five minutes before it got lit on fire. There's still a couple of them out here that'll do it for a few bucks. I'm not quite sure why that camp got burned down yet. I don't know why a lot of camps got burnt down. But uh, yeah, it, I could say it definitely is a popular thing. I've could probably account for at least five off the top of my head that got burnt down uh, this year, including my own. You see the trailer just up in the blaze. Yeah, I came out here in 93. My daughter was 11 years old. I had three kids. I was a single parent out here. And there's been a lot of changes out here. It's not the same as it used to be. It used to be pretty nice out here, and now it's getting to where it's almost cutthroat. In the summer, you see a lot more tweakers out here. A tweaker is someone that likes to smoke meth, you know, uh, crystal meth. Um, gets all messed up in their head and gets stuck in whatever they're doing, you know, like working on bikes, you know, or electronics or whatever they do, you know. He came to my slab with a machete screaming uh, that he was going to murder me with it and he broke out like three windows in my trailer and broke out the door window and hacked it into the door frame and such. He got in the living room with it, you know, still screaming bloody murder. And he, he had broken out three windows in my trailer and the fucking frosted uh, wired security window that was in the fucking trailer door with this bigger than three foot long rusty machete that, that had a fucking gleaming edge on it like that, you know, like that deep that looked like he had just running across a bench grinder. And the whole time he's screaming that he's here to fucking murder me, I'm a son of a bitch, blah, blah, blah. And Smiley steps around me and says, you're not gonna murder anybody before we've had our coffee. And just clamps his arm around the guy's wrist that's holding the machete, walks him out on his tippy toes, turns around in my living room, walks down my front steps, out my driveway. When we decide to go swimming, we kind of go down that way a little bit. Um, they have ladders that we crawl in, just hop in and go swimming a little bit. We try and stay away from the drops. Um, not that long ago, actually, uh, uh, 
little girl ended up actually drowning in here because she was with her grandpa and the grandpa was drinking a little bit and the two kids ran ahead and jumped in at one of the drops where it siphons down the water um, and she ended up jumping in saving the nine-year-old boy but the seven-year-old little girl ended up drowning um, that was really bad you know um, but that's why we don't go next to the drops we always go at least one ladder down two ladders down away from the drop the only way I can get water is I have to go to the canal I drink canal water and that's not too good for you, but as long as you boil it, it turns out to be all right, I guess. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> there was an outer towner who didn't know their way around, and there are dangerous places in the canal to swim, but there's also extremely safe places where you could take little tiny children and they'll be fine. Yeah. But then there's places where you do not take little children, and just recently some bad parent brought their child to somewhere they shouldn't have been swimming and they got sucked underground and uh, found like a few like a hundred miles from here upriver. There's been uh, quite a few Mexican illegals that has tried smuggling through here and they usually do that by the drops and at night and Border Patrol has been right on it. I mean uh, they pulled out I think the biggest bus was like 30 of them at one time they had to bring a bus out here to pick them all up. After I sneak into your country, you will pay for my health care. You will give me a driver's license and you will pay me under the table so I don't pay taxes. When I have children, you will pay for their schooling and any crimes they commit, you will also pay for it. And don't expect from me to speak your fucking language or respect your, your flag. You fucking racist pigs, your Mexican friend. Vato loco! They have problems with them snuggling through the uh, bombing range, which is dangerous because there's a lot of live bombs still left out there on the ground. And that's something they worry about too. Because people that are out there trying to make money, like picking up the brass, I've done that myself. And now they've got it to where you can't even, nobody will buy it around here anymore. But some of them have brought in live bombs and they've had an incident where a man uh, was taking a hammer to break one up and they found him up in the tree in pieces. I mean, it's dangerous. Welcome to the Slab City Internet Cafe. I am Rob, the proprietor, and I'm going to take you on a little tour. Offer, of course, coffee in the morning. Um, we try and keep a barrel of ice water when it's hot. Charging facilities. Um, back here, we have the kitchen. We've got a dozen solar panels up on the roof. We're into my battery room down into the charge control box, then out to the batteries, from the batteries to an inverter, and then out to the public area. This is strictly a solar powered internet uh, cafe. I don't have a generator and only will only borrow a generator in extreme emergency. I run six volt batteries and chain them together to make 12 volt batteries. So instead of six six volt batteries, I have three very large 12 volt batteries. Coffee, water, internet, and electricity. I smoke nothing but weed, blueberry, bubonic, chronic with no seed, hydroponically grown indeed, and best believe I get so high I can fly over the seas along the clouds, I ain't hell for bomb, but don't get me wrong about how I keep myself calm, I blow no less than hydro, grown in H2O, not that I'm both, and I like champagne toasting and coasting and Cadillacs and strolling across the beaches and hollering at the women who like the smell of the reefer that's creeping out my window, then as well, I got the fire from hell, but heaven put it dead in the air, that's where the key to the golden gates is, seven minus six equals one blunt to the dome to get me and carry me home, I swear, I could tear this earth of a good weed and dirt, but water so much meaning. It makes a 
weed so much cleaner and greener. So I fiend for a thing called the queen of mankind. Let her name be sticky or so icky. The same kind of kind, but at least we so rich in the THC. She burns so slowly, she put weak mind to sleep. And ironically, she called weed or marijuana. And that's why I'm off of Tijuana with somebody's daughter or mama. We're gone the ganja. We don't give a fuck at the drama. Cause we're smoking nothing but weed, blueberry, bubonic, chronic with no seed. Had a chronic and grown indeed. Misbelieve, I get higher than you do. You better be careful, I'm the most dangerous son of a bitch in the whole universe. Hey. You wanna see something, I'll show you something. Look, the enemy of my enemy, she's my friend. Savi, just imagine that horsefly that's biting you, and stinging you, betraying you to death. And this son of a gun, she grabs him, and stabs him in the ass with her stinger, and eats him head first. I love her, see? Understand? The enemy of my enemy, she's my friend. She fucks him up and eats him alive. <laughs> it's horrible, it hurts like heck. I've been hit 32 times, and I, uh, I was more dead and alive when people prayed for me. When they bite you, it is horrible. It's, it's like they're, they're chewing on you for six months straight. When they bite you, not sting you, it's horrible. The digestive enzymes and the proteins eat your flesh. For six months, you can see them in your imagination chewing on you. You have a, 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 a you step for two weeks and you hallucinate, you have a two week nightmare in the horrible agonies of hell. It's not the face you're fucking, it's the fuck you're facing. You fuck up that eating, you're gonna eat up that fucking. It's all over but the shouting, that's what my dad told me. Testing, testing, can you hear me? Lob City! I say that we are the island of misfit toys. Anybody's welcome here, as long as you don't cause trouble. You come out here to the desert and you look for peace and you look for a place just to build up on your own. You know, just some place you can call your own. And that's what the slabs does for people in poverty. They're saying that there's a lot of, uh, or what do you call it, uh, radioactive uh, in this ground. And it's, they say that's not too healthy and they say it's getting worse all the time. Quiet. You know, solitude, there's like no one around and you really feel like it's just you sometimes. Listen, listen to this. See the refrigerator? The, the, the wind chimes back there? Something flapping? The canopy? And the wind? That's all you hear here. This is peace. I like it. We really don't want to live in society anymore. We don't fit in. We are the Bad Batch. We really are. That's so much describing Slab City. The land is up for sale, right? This part, this whole part of Slab City is up for sale. And in order for us not to get, because technically we're squatters here in Slab City. And if we don't want to get kicked out, there's like legal things you have to go through. This is an abandoned military base. Yeah. Uh, for, and for 60 years, there have been people squatting here illegally. I mean, and it's, it's been protected by it, the isolation of it. It's so desolate, so far away from everything, right? Well, the world is creeping up on us. You know, you see all those power plants out there, you see the, the the sky isn't even dark anymore. You know, when I first came to Slab City, it was so dark, you couldn't walk down the street and stay on the street. It was that dark. You know, if you didn't have a flashlight with you. And, and but now you walk around, you can see just fine. Because the, the city lights have encroached so close, that the whole sky is lit up. I got involved with Salvation Mountain. And, it turned, and I'm on the board of directors down there. And the State Lands Commission actually approached us if we wanted to own Slab City. The state wants to unhorse this land. They came to us telling us they wanted to unhorse the land. The man actually told me it could eventually go up for auction. 